When I was in China, I picked up a couple of uh, USB power adapters. These kind of varied from 50p to a pound a piece. And my original plan was just to quickly open up a couple of these, take a look at the build quality, and just see if any were dangerous. If um, cause some of these power supplies coming out of China have got really poor separation between high voltage and low voltage sides, and are really quite scary to think of um, using them in normal day to day use. But um, I've come across another odd problem. The I'm just going to quickly open up one of these, one or two of these, just go through because there it is quite interesting just from a um, a, a safety perspective. Uh, this part here, if that's going to go in focus, is labelled as um, an actual Apple product. That'll focus in there, but it, it's kind of listed as an Apple item. I don't have an original or a proper one in here to really kind of check or confirm, um, to compare. I don't think it's genuine. Um, I'm, I'm really sure it's not genuine. The build quality is reasonable, um, as I found previously when I opened these, but it's not amazing. Um, so this is just a press fit piece here. Um, out of the, the after the three different types, because these are the same, um, it's certainly got the best build quality. The mains connections here are covered over, so there's no risk of contact. A little bit more kind of padding to secure it in place. Um, got kind of a driver IC, transformer under there, a couple of diodes, a uh, capacitor, in there, and obviously the USB connector for the power output. And if I pull that out, there is some. Um, reasonable safety considerations have gone into this. And so there's a, uh, a clearly defined path between the high voltage and low voltage side. And they've even put cutouts in here to increase the kind of the, the separation distance between uh, in areas where it's kind of getting quite close. They've put these extra bits in. And so it's pretty reasonable. It doesn't strike me as an Apple product, but it's, um, it's not bad. Um, this is kind of contrasted uh, quite nicely to kind of one of these items. This is, uh, should just pop out the same way. Okay. This is a two board construction, same as this one over here. These are similar but different. I'm not going to bother opening this one again gain. Um, this is the second take of this video because it, um, it turned out, um, like I said, I, I, when I finished recording the other one I discovered something uh, slightly more interesting going on which I'm going to try and investigate afterwards. And so again, this has uh, no kind of obvious separation between high and low voltage. So you've got bridge rectifier in here and so there's going to be 300 odd volts across these terminals here they kind of pass off into the kind of transformer here. There's no separation, there's no clear kind of break. Um, so it wouldn't take much for the power to kind of arc so the mains to become present on this output connector here. The other thing I'm just going to mention while this one's out is uh, this has got these outputs are rated for different currents. I originally thought it was probably two power supplies in here or two different circuits, but it's not. They're, they're telling the, the device how much current it can draw. And so one connector's got the two middle pins soldered together. And in the other case here, it's uh, kind of hooked over and it's creating a, uh, a kind of a, a, a kind of a fixed voltage on there. So it's telling the host, so communicating back to it what it can take. And now I was going to leave it there, but I am uh, revisiting because of this. This is a QI wireless phone charger I picked up. Um, it was quite cheap, under £10. I tried it when I was there, confirmed it was working, and it worked once when I got home. But subsequently, I couldn't get it to function. It powered up, but it would, wouldn't detect the phone, it wouldn't do anything. And and this is kind of odd. I was running it off these power supplies. They, they were fine, they charged the phone directly. But it would not work. As soon as I, but as soon as I plugged this into a, an existing kind of power source, it functioned perfectly. So there is something wrong with um, 
these units. There's something bizarre with the way they work and that is what I'm going to try to get to the bottom of now. Okay, so this QI charger, it's plugged into a um, standard kind of mobile phone charger. It's picked up from the UK and you've got red lights, bring it close and it starts charging, turns blue. And that works exactly the same if I plug it into this one here. So this is, uh, as I pointed out, a slightly better quality one and that uh, does the same. But then into this final one here, and hopefully it won't prove me wrong, does nothing at all. Now I took, measured the voltage output from this and it was sitting around about uh, uh, kind of 5.2 volts, a little bit higher. So I thought perhaps it's a voltage issue. So I've got hold of a, uh, a USB cable here. Let's unhook that. And I've hooked it up to the bench power supply. So if I run that at five volts, we can kind of test on the other side. Perfectly fine. You can see the charging sequence kind of jumps up halfway and then fully through. <coughs> so I'll up this. So 5.2 volts. No problem at all. Point three. Still no problem. And it also works a little bit kind of down as well. 4.8 still functions and so it's not the voltage um, it's possible it's trying to pull this uh, it tries to spike up to that kind of high current and then fails but um, I'm not sure it is because it jumps to blue straight away before it tries to pull current and but I'm not seeing that with the other device so I think it's probably uh, it might be noise on the line, so I can get a oscilloscope out and take a look at the outputs of uh, these kind of crappy supplies and see what they're like. Okay, so what I've got set up here is the uh, oscilloscope up here. You can see the trace on the screen, hopefully. And uh, I've got the QI charger hooked up down here. And I'm measuring the input voltage coming into it. First of all, I'm just going to take a look at the power supply, which is uh, kind of known to work. And so, if I look at the input voltage, you can see the trace is. Uh, put that back. That's the trace is pretty decent, it's running like 5.2 volts, quite high up. And so I'm now going to put that onto the phone. Blue lights come on, charging started, and it, it, it's not great. Uh, the, the voltage has dropped, which is a little unusual. The bench power supply um, should have kind of maintained this, so it's possible there's some losses. It's a pretty kind of cheap, crappy cable I'm running here, so there might be some losses in that. But it's, uh, it's enough, the charger is charging, it's working. So I'm going to switch over to the kind of Apple clone charger now got running on this other cable here. Now this one does work as well. I thought it'd be interesting to kind of look at the difference. And so on the trace there is um, definite kind of uh, ripple on there. It's not being smoothed out particularly well but it's not kind of that clean either. And if I bring that over to the phone, again we're seeing the same kind of voltage drop the uh, kind of frequency has kind of spread out a little bit, but it's still relatively flat. And importantly, it's working. So I'm going to switch over to one of the uh, kind of really crappy chargers now. Let's see what that does. Okay, so switch over to the other charger, the red light on, and take a look at the input voltage. And see the uh, trace is much more kind of pronounced. We've got uh, uh, kind of a lot, um, so it's not kind of smoothing the supply enough. It's that high kind of frequency switching. There isn't a big enough capacitor in there to smooth that down. And uh, so it's slightly more than the others. 
if I put that onto the phone now, it uh, kind of doesn't really do much at all. And so it's either the supply isn't clean enough or something else is going on. So I think a quick way to test that is to solder a capacitor across the input feed. So I'm going to put a capacitor across the kind of the, the input lines in here and uh, see if that kind of changes the behavior at all. Okay, I've soldered a thousand microfarad capacitor across, um, across one of the input capacitors, just a little ceramic capacitor in there. And I've kind of put that across the terminals. It's a 10 volt rated, so it, it's kind of just pretty generic, but it'll do the job. And I've clipped the test probes onto that. You can see in the scope now, we've got our trace up here. You can still see the ripple. Um, I'm slightly surprised. I didn't think there'd be that much there shouldn't be that much current drawn in this mode to see that, but it's possible this high value capacitor here um, isn't kind of, hasn't got particularly great performance with the, the high frequency ripple. It might be better off with a slightly lower value, but it is certainly a lot, uh, lot less than it was before. So I'm going to give this a go with the phone now, and we're looking for a change in this red light here. Yeah, and we've got a great blue light. So that has... Uh, it has worked. The voltage is maintaining at a, uh, um, a decent output voltage. The waveform is pretty stable and the phone is charging. And so that, um, yes, I think that's the reason this is a, uh, um, it's quite a cheap charger. It doesn't have much in the way of kind of, um, uh, in kind of smoothing of the input supply. It's got, appears to have kind of one um, small kind of ceramic capacitor across the line and that's about it so only nothing kind of large on there uh, couple that with a, a crappy usb power supply which can't deliver much and uh, makes for kind of a combination where it just does not work together so um the for my case i don't think it doesn't cause any problems and um, i could try and squeeze a small capacitor or two inside the case there isn't a huge amount of room but it theoretically might be possible but to be honest I, I just need to be careful with what charger I use it with and um, I'll stick to using these uh, little cheap ones for um, really kind of maybe home projects things like that where it doesn't matter but um, that was quite an interesting problem to kind of spot and diagnose that one because I thought my uh, wireless charger had broken